Hello everyone, my name is Zubrasui and today I'll be showing you how to make an elevator in Create 0.5.1. The first thing we're going to need is an elevator pulley. To make this you need an iron sheet, dried kelp block, and a brass casing. You will also need a redstone contact for the elevator and then also one for each floor. To make this use some cobblestone, some redstone dust, and an iron sheet. Optionally, you can also make some contraption controls. This will require an electron tube and a site casing and a button of any type. These controls will basically let you select the floor while you're inside the elevator. For this video, I've returned to Ubersuite Labs where we had our previous elevator. As you can see, we have a hole here in the floor and here's our basement where all our redstone used to be to control our old elevator for 0.5.0. And now with 0.5.1, it's much easier. So to get started, let's place down some andesite casing. You could do this with any type of block as long as it's a solid block. And it's just to give us a platform for our elevator. Next, I'll get some metal girders for the sides of the elevator. This will be connecting to our roof and hold it in place. And for the roof, I'm just gonna use some more andesite casing. And remember that with the crate mod, with a lot of items, you can hold W to ponder. And we can also do this with the elevator pulley to get a description of how it works. So now we're ready to add our redstone contacts. So I'm going to go ahead and put one on top of the elevator, just like so. And then another one facing towards it. You'll see that they're connected when they light up. Now we can go ahead and use some super glue to glue our elevator together. I always try to glue large areas. So you can see here, I select the bottom and then I try to go all the way up to the top on the other edge but I try to avoid selecting any area outside of the box itself. So there we go. Our basic elevator should now be ready for our elevator pulley, and we can go ahead and put that up here at the top. We also need to give it some power. I'm gonna go ahead and use a creative motor, but you could use a windmill or a water wheel to give it power if you wanted to. And up here at the top, we have the top floor. So I'm gonna place another redstone contact here that will connect with the redstone contact of the elevator when the elevator goes up. And now if we take a final look to see that everything's okay, we can go ahead and right click on our elevator pulley and that should connect the elevator to the elevator pulley itself, just like so. We can see that this worked because the elevator pulley has now connected to our elevator and the redstone contacts here have changed to have this rose quartz look. And we can also see that the one here at the bottom is actually active and emitting a redstone signal. By giving one of these redstone contacts a redstone signal, we can actually activate the elevator. Let's go ahead and try this with a button. So if we place a button here, if we click this, it should now call the elevator up to us. And as you can see, we're running at 16 RPM, so it's a little bit slow, but it is working. So if we head over to our creative engine on the other side here, we can hold and right click to change the speed. And for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna set this pretty fast. I think 128 is pretty good. It might be a little bit fast for our base or something like that, but generally you won't fly off the floor. And now to test this out, we can put another button here at the bottom and click it to call the elevator down, and as you can see, it's much faster now. You can use redstone links to call the elevator wirelessly. Redstone links take two different frequencies as signals, so we can set frequency one and two here to andesite casings. And then by right-clicking with our wrench, we can set this redstone link to receiving. And as long as we have another redstone link with the same two frequencies, we can send a redstone signal wirelessly. This will allow you to place the button to call the elevator pretty much anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and place another redstone link here on the floor. We're gonna go ahead and set both frequencies to andesite casings. You could use pretty much any block for this if you wanted to, but the important thing is that the frequencies are matching. So now we can go ahead and place down a button right here in front of this. And now we should be able to call our elevator using this button. But in order to demonstrate this, I'm gonna click this button to call the elevator up first. And now that the elevator is up, we want to activate this redstone contact here using this redstone link. And to do that, we can press the button that's down here. And as you can see, our elevator is now called down. Now we're gonna go ahead and make some changes to our elevator. And to do that, we're gonna right click on our elevator pulley to disassemble it. 
And then I'm going to put some contraption controls inside the elevator. Since we glued the entire elevator, they're already going to have glue on them, so we don't have to do anything about that. And we can just go back up again and right click on the elevator pulley to assemble our elevator again. Just like so, and now you can see it's assembled. If we go inside our elevator, you'll now see that the contraption controller has numbers, and you can change them by scrolling up and down while looking at the contraption controller. This is a floor selection, and you can then right click to select the floor that you want to go to. So if I right click now, we're going to go to the first floor. Then I can scroll and right click to go back down again. And this is a really easy way to control the elevator while you're inside of it. Now, I do also have a basement here, so if we go all the way down into the basement here, we can go ahead and put a redstone contact, I believe it's like three blocks up or something like that, and we need to turn it to face the right way, like so. We have now added another floor to our elevator. And if we go back up, we can now look at our contraption controller here, and if we scroll, we can now see that we have a negative one floor, and right clicking that will take us down. Oh, it looks like we went a little bit too far down here. I guess I placed the redstone contact a little bit too low, but that's not a problem. The elevator has not broken or anything like that. We can just go ahead and bring it back up again. And then we can go back down and change the redstone contact to be in the correct position. And that should fix our elevator. So it's very easy to just like remove and add floors whenever you need to. I guess I counted the wrong number here the last time. But okay, four blocks this time. That should be correct. And if we go upstairs again, we can select the right floor on our contraption controller here. So negative one, and then we right click. And now we should be taken down to the basement and we should not go through the floor. And there we go, it's now working. Now let's do something a little bit more advanced. So we're gonna disassemble our elevator. Then I'm going to use some copycat panels to start decorating our elevator. And the great thing with copycat panels is that they can take the look of pretty much any block in Minecraft. I'm also going to use an andesite door for the front of our elevator. Once we have all our copycat panels in place, I'm going to use some andesite bars to decorate them. It's probably not the prettiest block, but it kind of reminds me of an old elevator that I saw that just had like a bunch of bars everywhere. So for this video, that's what I'm gonna use. I'm also gonna use some frame glass for the windows on either side. Next, we're gonna need to super glue all the copycat panels that we've now added. You have to be a little bit careful here to make sure that the blocks that you're gluing are actually connected because if they're not connected, your glue is actually not gonna connect and you'll end up with some missing blocks. If you do have some missing blocks after you've glued everything like this and assembled your elevator, you can just go back and disassemble again and redo the glue until it's all connected. Just make sure the elevator is on the right floor when you're actually disassembling it. You also wanna be careful not to accidentally glue some of the surrounding structure around the elevator here. So as you can see here, some of the initial glue that I did actually didn't stick because the different areas of the glue were not connected. So I'm having to redo the front here because I couldn't do it all the way through in one glue. I think I can think of better ways to glue this, but this works for now. Now that everything is glued, we can fly up to our elevator pulley and right click with our hand. And that will assemble the elevator again. And we can now switch the floor like so, and you'll see the elevator door closing and opening as the elevator reaches the floor. And there we go. We now have a decorated elevator with a door. Now, let's say we want to display what floor the elevator is currently on. We can easily do that with a Nixie tube. And I'm gonna go ahead and place mine just like so. Then we'll use a display link. And by right clicking on the Nixie tube, we can set that as the target. And then we'll place the display link on the redstone contact. Then we need to right click on our display link and we can see that it's gonna show the elevator location and it's gonna send it to a single line on the Nixie tube. Once we click the check mark, we can now test this by changing the floor. So let's take the elevator up to the first floor, like so. And then if we go outside and check the Nixie tube, we can now see that the elevator is on the first floor. And of course, if we go up to the elevator again and we change it to the zero floor and right click, 
Then we can go outside and check the Nixie tube, and you'll see that it's now 4-0. This, of course, isn't limited to Nixie tubes only. You can use it on anything that can be used with a display link. So here I am setting up a display board. We'll just put a cog here in the back, and then we can put a display board on top, connect that with a display link. And now if we right click and click the check mark, you'll see that our display link is now displaying the current floor. By right clicking on our redstone contact, we can also change the name of the floor. So here our current floor is called zero and we can change it to zero F. And now when we move the elevator, you'll see that the floor is displayed as zero F. We can also go ahead and change the floor to 1F, for example, if we're not happy with it being zero. Then we can go up top to our other redstone contact and change that to 2F, just so that the floors are not the same. And now when we go into our elevator, we can see that the contraption controller is actually displaying the correct floor. And when we go up, it shows 2F. Going down again shows 1F and our Nixie tube and display board is also showing the updated names. Now by right clicking our redstone context, we can also add a floor description. I was a little bit disappointed that I couldn't get this to show up on like display boards, for example, but it will show up on your contraption controller. So I set the bottom elevator contact to ground floor, and then I'm going to name this a no floor because currently there is no floor up here. And if we head inside our elevator and look at our contraption controller, you can now see that we have a description under each floor. This will be really useful if you want to have different names for your floors, like, you know, bedroom or mob farm or whatever you might have. Now for this next part, I'm going to go ahead and modify our elevator. I'll be adding two more doors, one to either side. Now, as you can see, each elevator door can be opened or closed, just like so. And it will be closed automatically when the elevator goes up and then opened as the elevator arrives at a floor. However, with our elevator contacts, we can modify this behavior to make it even better. Because in some cases, you might not want all the doors open. So let's say we have a floor on this side of the elevator. So our no floor floor is now going to have a floor. It's a little bit confusing, but please stay with me. What we want to happen is when the elevator arrives up, we want it to only open that door. To achieve this, we can right click on the redstone contact for that floor. And as you can see, we now have several different options on how we want to open the doors. And you will also see at the bottom, it says we are facing west. And since we're facing in the same direction as the door we want to open, we know that we can select west side only as the door. And that will keep all other doors closed as we arrive on this floor. As you can see, the doors that were not selected were closed now, and this door remained opened. So we can go ahead and test this by going down to the bottom floor. All doors will still open on this floor because we haven't done any settings. I actually want the front door here to open as we come down here. So we can go ahead and right click on this redstone contact. And now it says we're facing west again. Let me reposition. So now we're going to be facing, let's see, we're facing south now. So I want the south door to open. And all other doors will remain closed. And we can see that updates as well. And now we can head down into our elevator to actually test this and go up to the top floor and you'll see that only one door is opening and it's the door we selected. And if we go back down again, only our south side door will open. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about elevators. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.